The gun seasons in the Midwest account for the harvest of many great bucks each year. Contrary to popular belief, this is not entirely due to the increased effective range of modern guns, but rather the timing of the seasons. On the evening of December 18th, Owen Riegler heads to a blind, hoping to capitalize on these conditions. All right, we are live. Dad just took off this morning, so he's headed back home. We got one day to try and get it done, so we came back in here after that same tweezers buck. We haven't seen anything of him in two previous hunts, but third time's a charm, maybe. What do we got for temperatures? It's like 38. It's a beautiful day, and this blind's actually pretty warm, but I believe it's like 38. We got a south-southwest wind. It's carrying back this direction here, so pretty good wind for this spot. Should be a pretty good sit. We'll see what happens. Well, it looked like we made a decent shot on him. Jeremy lost him when he ran off, but he got over to this standing corn right there and looked like he was about to go down and he crashed through that, so I expect him to be just the other side of that corn right there, so. I don't have a very good light, but let's see if we got enough light to go recover him real quick. He didn't even make it past the corn. I thought maybe he made it into this timber, but he's laying right there on that edge. Just on the edge of the corn there. This is the buck we call tweezers here. The one we've been after during this second gun. Just a pretty buck. It's too bad dad had to go home today. I just called him and told him too bad he couldn't stay one more day. He came out today. Let's get a tag on him and get him loaded up and we'll get him back out tomorrow. We can get another look at him then. All right, here we are. We're back next day. We got him out here to take a look at him. 
Beautiful buck, good solid mass. He's still got these tweezer brows. This is how he got his name. You can see every year, even on his sheds there, he's always had those brows like that. He's a little bit bigger this year than he was last year. He was, he was pretty good and solid last year, but I thought he was just four last year, so we passed him. He shed real early anyway. He showed up, uh, I guess it's middle of November, he showed up and he had a wound right here on the side. He'd been shot by a bow hunter which I'm surprised he survived that, honestly, but he shed like the first couple days of December. I got a picture of him with just one side on, and then a couple days later, that other side fell off. Later there in 2020, I had an encounter with him. Both sides shed. I was hunting after that ice storm. Another shed buck came in, and for some reason, I don't know if those two bucks just had it out for each other or what, but the, the other shed buck just kept like he thought he had antlers it was trying to gore him get underneath him and flip him over and stuff it was crazy and this one kept standing up trying to smack him in the head i never seen him do that before not that aggressive unless it was an all-out fight during the rut you know so that was interesting to see but ended up being a fantastic hunt yesterday anytime i'm out there watching deer i'm having fun and you know then one of your target bucks walks out this is the one i was Hoping dad would get a crack at, but you know, we weren't getting along too good. He was having trouble sitting in there and whatnot. And we had one evening to give it a shot. And dad went back home yesterday. So we gave her a shot. And wouldn't you know, last year out, about five minutes left a legal shooting. And here he comes with a, another pretty nice 10 as well. There was two nice young 10s out there. And then this, this year I figured it's a five year old buck. So was happy to take him and just keep on managing the farm. I, I love the management stuff, the whole lifestyle of, you know, doing the TSI and the food plots and managing the deer herd. So all that stuff interests me now. I have a lot of, a lot of fun, really enjoy doing that kind of stuff. But, well, we still got a, a little bit of season left. We got this late muzzleloader season. So we'll see if we can get on another buck yet. I think Wolverine, last I knew, was still alive. Um, and also that light switch buck. So I'd really like to go after that light switch buck. He's a really, really tough deer to kill and I, I like the challenge of it. So that's a deer I'd probably, I'm probably gonna hunt, but we may go after Wolverine here or there as well. So stay tuned on the daily channel. We'll, we'll be hunting right along till the end of the season probably. So we'll see you guys there. With the Iowa gun seasons over, bow hunters return to the woods. Jared Mills is readying himself for an afternoon hunt on December 20th. All right, here we go. December 20th, it is the first day of Iowa's late season. Uh, you can hunt with a muzzleloader or you can hunt with a bow. Obviously, having not killed a buck yet this year, I got more than enough tags in my pocket. But I'm just bringing the bow, obviously. Ethan also has his bow tonight. We're down at the river farm and uh, conditions aren't great. A little warm. A little warmer than what you'd like this time of year, but we're just excited to be back out. It's been a, a long break from being out in the woods during the gun season, so just happy to be back out here with the bow. There are multiple targets in here, um, probably two or three deer that I would shoot, including Merino, obviously at the top of the list. Not a likely candidate, but got to be here and maybe we'll get lucky, but there's a couple other deer that are 6 by 6 that is mature and then also uh there's an eight kind of an inside point on his left side that i would probably shoot to another mature deer and this time of year you never know we have a decent amount of food this on this farm so we could get a, a new buck showing up 
And then finally, probably the most likely candidate is this buck we call Rob, and that is Ethan's primary target tonight. I would say we have about a 1% chance of seeing Marino and probably an 85% chance of seeing Rob. He has spent a lot of time in this area. We've had a bunch of encounters with him. And hopefully we can uh, have our final encounter with him tonight. So it's gonna be fun with, the boat, with both of us having bows and tags in our pocket. Up the chances for a successful night. This blind I moved in here uh, just before the gun season started. It's a redneck on a trailer. I moved it in here and it's it's way up in the beans. It's not like, uh, you know, ideally you'd want to be on the edge or something, but our access isn't bad. Our wind's not terrible, but we'll likely have deer downwind of us tonight. It's just, I decided to do that just because I'm bow hunting. If I was gun hunting, I could keep it, you know, couple hundred yards at least back there easy in and out but because I don't want to really bring the gun out here I decided to just get the boat get the blind right up in bow range of where these deer come out so it's gonna take a little bit of luck but I'm excited there's been no pressure on this property for weeks now so the deer hopefully are comfortable in here used to this blind hopefully we'll see a bunch of deer tonight Hundred and seventy miles to the southwest in Missouri, Justin Lubricht is settling into a blind for the afternoon hunt. Well guys, it's the evening of December the 20th. I'm up here at the main farm and I've decided to come back here and hunt the big food plot where we got this standing corn and I recently knocked the corn down uh, about a week or so ago just you know to try to get some fresh corn in here and uh, We've been hunting a buck we call Shorty. He showed back up December the 9th. He was in here at the a.m. and the p.m. I believe it was that day. And uh, just lo and behold, I woke up this morning on the uh, Cuddy Link Sailor system and uh, there he is. He was in here this morning, right in front of us here on this freshly knocked down corn. So we're gonna kinda hope that it's a repeat like he was on the 9th. Uh, he's a six and a half year old mainframe 11 pointer. And uh, he's not going to score a lot, but you know, they always say age before beauty, and that's exactly what we're looking for tonight. It's kind of warm out here, so I'm not sure what to expect, but we're going to get settled in here. We've already got some fawns in front of us here, and fortunately the field was full of them when I got here, but there's just really no way to enter this food plot without spooking deer off of it. You know, we have the maze that comes right down through the center of the corn, but you still have to get up and in into the redneck, so... We're gonna get settled in here and hopefully we have a repeat like he was in here on December the 9th and we get a shot at him.
guys, if the shot felt good, but I think I'm gonna have to go back and look at the footage. I, I don't know. I can't tell enough on the screen on the camera, but it looks like I'm, I hit him in the white, which that's a, a little low, but the shot, like I said, felt good when I released it. That's, that's the deer we came in here after. That's, that's Shorty. He's a six and a half year old mainframe 11 pointer. I just can't buy a break on these deer. He was 35 yards and I was just, I was putting the pin right, my 30 yard pin right on him. Just anticipating if he did, you know, go low, then I was good. But if I, if he didn't, then I still should have been in the money, but man. As Justin tries to stomach his likely miss, back on the river farm, the deer are getting on their feet. the very first encounter with Marino of the season and it wasn't the one that we wanted. All the deer for whatever reason wanted to be in that the back corner of that field. They basically would go out of their way to get there. That's where we were blowing our wind tonight. And I think it was actually maybe swirling a little bit that way the wind was has been switching all afternoon. That's what beat us. And really, that's what beat us on Rob. We had Rob come out first. We were trying to make a move and get position for a shot on him. And he or the does he was with winded us. They ran back into the woods. And not even five minutes later, right where they came out of, here comes Marina with a group of does and small bucks. I obviously didn't expect to see him, but good to see him just hate that we spooked him I was I was worried about the beginning of the hunt deer getting in that spot I did not expect every year to go there it's good to see that he hasn't shed yet either because last year he shed at the very beginning of December he had shed both antlers I think by now for sure so hopefully he didn't spook terribly bad he was running hard with the other deer uh, I don't know which one actually busted us but pretty disappointing for sure hopefully we can get in get back in here with a little better wind coming up I know the conditions aren't going to be ideal it's going to warm up but we're just going to stay after him hopefully he doesn't leave the property gets comfortable in here with the food we can get another chance <laughs> it was funny Ethan said that right before that he said if I had a muzzle on her, Rob would have been dead I said, think of money, how many times we're going to say that this late season, and that's the case for Marina too, but obviously we aren't going to change what we're doing.
After a heartbreaking encounter with Marino the previous evening, Jared heads back to the river farm, hopeful of a repeat encounter. All right, it's December 21st. Ethan and I are all set up for the afternoon hunt. It's a little after three o'clock. We just got set up. Decided to come to this little oak tree. It's actually on this little clover plot, and I don't expect the deer to be feeding in the clover. Um, I expect them to be going to the beans. But this is at least in the vicinity of where Marino came out last night. Uh, from where we were, I couldn't tell exactly where, but it was somewhere in this area. And I didn't want to go back to that same blind. I actually wanted to move it a little bit, but didn't get a chance to. So we just snuck into the stand. Hopefully we can catch him going out to wherever he's wanting to go. If nothing else, we can see the entire area. So if he's in here and he gets up before dark, we should lay eyes on him. Really gusty winds right now, 30 plus mile an hour gusts. Um, they lay down and blow real hard again. Anytime that happens, I worry about some of the kickback wind going the opposite direction. This is, in theory, a consistent wind spot. But those gusts make me a little nervous, but we'll see what happens. Um, I think we saw our first deer around 3.20, 3.30 yesterday, so hopefully we're in the right spot tonight. Well, at this point in the season, Ethan and I are no longer surprised at all uh, the way these deer continue to beat us and we just don't have any luck on our side. It was a relatively slow night and then right the last probably 30 minutes is just they are crawling out of the woodworks. It was just deer everywhere. We probably had 20 plus in front of us in our little clover plot. But we watched Marino walk right into bow range of the redneck we were sitting in last night. You know, there's uh, coming out up there, there's almost a Y. And last night he took the fork that brought him downwind of the blind last night. And tonight he took the one that we probably would have got a shot last night. Um, and he just fed right in front of the redneck pretty much the rest of the night. The good part is we were able to get out clean. Um, last I saw that field, the, the redneck was surrounded with deer. Last I saw, um, I don't think we spooked them after that because we were going the opposite direction. So that is the good news. Um, bad news is the weather coming up isn't good, and uh, you know he's in there for sure. Hopefully he stays in there and hopefully continues to come out and feed um, before dark. But with the warmer weather, you know, not really forced to feed very early. So we'll see if he keeps doing it. Got to figure out how we can get in there. If I need to move that blind somewhere 
or hunt on the ground or something is where he's what he's doing is kind of a tough little pattern to hunt unless you sit right there in that redneck so cat and mouse it's time to begin that game again gonna try to game plan and stay after him good to see him again though with the late muzzleloader season in full swing Mike Reed readies his oldest daughter, Bella, for the final leg in her quest of harvesting the buck they know as Patient X. Keep counting. Look up. I got right in the center. Right in the center. <laughs> Who'd you shoot there? Uh, uh, the fat deer, right? Yeah. Well, it's Christmas Eve, December 24th, and Bella and I are out on the home farm looking for a repeat of last year. Uh, she shot her good buck last year on Christmas Eve. We've been patiently waiting to get out. I had to work all week since late muzzleloader opened up. We're back out with the crossbow. We've been practicing at home. Our primary targets, who do you want to shoot the most? Patient X. I really, really want to shoot Helen. Yeah, so Patient X, we've talked about him before. He's a deer that has a big sinus tumor. And he's been pretty active in this plot. Um, I think with the warmer temps, they're not as likely to pop up in daylight. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully they're bedded close and they decide to get up and come feed uh, right here in front of the blind tonight. So that we can get them, well, I can get them. During the final hours of the evening, Mike and Bella experience very little action. Lucky for Mike, his daughter Bella is not swayed in her pursuit of the buck. Ended up being a fantastic hunt yesterday. Anytime I'm out there watching deer, I'm having fun. And you know, then one of your target bucks walks out. We gave her a shot and wouldn't you know, last deer out, about five minutes left of legal shooting. That's, that's the deer we came in here after. That's. That shorty, he's a six and a half year old mainframe 11 pointer. I just can't buy a break on these deer. Yeah, Tim. Well, there's a very first encounter with Marino of the season, and it wasn't the one that we wanted. Well, at this point in the season, Ethan and I are no longer surprised at all uh, the way these deer continue to beat us, and we just don't have any luck on our side. Gonna try to game plan and stay after him. Good to see him again though. The late season can be feast or famine for hunters, especially those who continue with a bow. Hunting fields full of eyes can make any type of shot very difficult. This tough hunting for overly wary deer is our reality until the sun sets on this season. That is when we will begin dreaming about those steel gray skies and frosty mornings when we are once again chasing November. <laughs>